Hello everyone. So let's move on to our next lecture regarding Saul Kaplan's The Plight of Young Males. Now this essay does anticipate the continuum of opinion regarding the gender gap between males and females. Unlike a lot of your essays, uh, this essay is very direct in the fact that it is calling you to action. It wants you to do something. And the way that this essay is structured, it leads up to that in the last paragraph, which is normally what you do when you're writing a persuasive essay. This essay would also serve well as uh, a speech that someone could give. The way that it is structured, uh, it's building its momentum, it's giving you statistics, and the statistics become more reliable and more in-depth as the essay continues. So on page 732, uh, Kaplan begins with, I am proud of my bona fides on supporting the advancement of women. And it angers me to think how slow executive suites and boardrooms are to welcome more qualified females. Stubborn gender wage gaps for comparable work are unacceptable and must be closed. So here he begins his argument by acknowledging that women have endured discrimination, that there has been a gender gap, a wage gap. But then he directs your attention to something that is going on in America that should be discussed. He says, however, with all the attention and focus on supporting equal opportunities for women, we have taken our eyes off of an alarming trend. Young men in the United States are in trouble by any measure of educational attainment. It's a big deal, and for reasons of political correctness, we aren't talking enough about this growing national problem. So he believes that we have become so focused on making sure that women have rights that we are forgetting to pay attention to the fact that we need to train our young men to obtain and hold down jobs that will help them live comfortably in today's society. And he then again does another acknowledgement that women have endured issues, but then he redirects you back towards what men are enduring. And he starts this by giving you statistics. So if you look on page 733, First full paragraph, have you taken a stroll on a college campus recently? Where have the men gone? In the latest census, males comprise 51% of the total U.S. population between the ages of 18 to 24. Yet, just over 40% of today's college students are men. In fact, each year since 1982, more American women than men have received bachelor's degrees. Now, this is all said and good. But the one thing that I would like to say here is he doesn't give a source for any of these quotes. So if you were writing an essay like this for my class, I would be telling you that you have not supported your argument because I would like to know where you pulled these statistics from. But he does continue on and he says, and the gap continues to grow. Michael Thompson, author of Raising Cain, a great book on the plight of young males, illustrates the path we are going down with startling extrapolation. And so then he starts giving statistics. He starts uh, comparing these statistics to the success rates of women. And in paragraph five, he says, the NBC News report, women dominate high school honor rolls and now make up more than 70% of class valedictorians. 70%. But his statistic comes from an NBC News report. Now, I'm not saying that his source isn't reliable, but what I am saying is that I don't always believe what's on the news. Do I notice this trend? Yeah, I do, quite often, actually. I do notice that there are more women in my classroom than ever before. However, I also have classrooms where there are very few women at all. So I think he has a topic that needs to be discussed, but I am questioning the evidence that he's using to support his argument. 
If you turn the page to 734, he starts telling you what college graduates earn, what high school graduates earn, and he keeps listing the various degrees and their pay rates. And he's telling you that a long time ago, it was all right if someone didn't go to college because we lived in an industrial society, so you could work a manufacturing job and you could still achieve the American dream. However, the industrial age has gone wayside and now we're more towards office jobs and the service industries such as hotels, fast food, etc. And now people need some sort of education in order to secure employment. And if you look at the top of page 74, he says, with the disappearance of those industrial era jobs, the rod got pulled out from underneath that assumption. We replaced it with a new social contract by which a college degree, or at least some form of post-secondary credential was a necessity for anyone hoping to make a decent living. The numbers are clear. According to the census data, annual earnings for high school dropouts averaged 18,900, high school graduates 25,900, college graduates 45,400. Less than $50,000 a year is not going to support a family very well, and that's a college education. So I do appreciate the fact that he's bringing to our attention these statistics about how men are not achieving as much as they used to in regards to college education and what their income level is but isn't that income level issue just as important on the female side as well? If you look at the bottom of the page of 734, after he walks you through all the statistics for the various ethnicities and males and uh, where they're ranking within the college system and their pay rates, etc., he says, We think equal progress will only come when the United States has transferred its education system from a one-size-fits-all pipeline responding to the learning needs of all young men and women in the same way to an individualized approach where every student can find his or her own pathway. We must go from a system geared towards enrollment to one designed around the global completion. In some way, we must turn schools into places that recognize the specific learning needs of young men and help them prepare for 21st century jobs, and we must do it urgently or leave an entire generation foundering. So, what I would like to point out about this essay are several things, okay? First, he has a lot of statistics but he's not giving the sources for those statistics. That's not a good thing to do in essay writing, especially at the academic level. Um, I was trying to read exactly where this essay appeared and um, who he writes for, and Saul is the founder of the Business Innovation Factory, and he's the author of the business model how to Stay Relevant When the World is Changing. He has a blog called Saul Connected. And this essay appeared in the Harvard Business Review blog on March 9th, 2011. So he has a lot of credentials. And I'm thinking maybe he thought his credentials are good enough to support his argument. And I would disagree with that as a writer. I really think he should back up his statistics with reliable sources. Okay, so that's first off. Uh, second off, I think his argument would have been better had he had taken the thesis of his last, if he would have made his thesis his last two paragraphs. If he would have said, hey, look, both men and women are enduring some issues in the American econ economy our social contract used to be get an industrial job and you're going to do well. And now our social contract is you have to get some sort of degree or you're not going to do well at all. I think his argument would have been better had he had taken that route. He could have anticipated objections. He could have planted naysayers and then discussed gender. And I think this would have contributed to a better structure for his essay. But 
I would like to know what you think about it. Do you think his structure is good? Do you think he could have improved on it? Um, do you think that his credentials give him the opportunity to cite these statistics without having to prove where the math was completed or how it was completed? I'd like to know what you think about this. So, The Plight of Young Mills by Saul Kaplan. He raises an issue about some challenges that men are facing in American society. He says, yes, I know that women have faced a lot of challenges, but we need to keep our eyes also focused on the men. That's the basis of this essay. I'll see you next time online and in the classroom. Be blessed.